These two universities have great basketball tradition, and they're meeting for the first time in 25 years, last meeting back in 1980. Bitsnoggle in the circle, the toss and the tap with Palacios, controlled by the Cardinals. And Taekwon Dean. It'll be important, as Tracy mentioned earlier, to watch Taekwon Dean's lateral movement. Again, with him hampered, Louisville loses some of their ball handling capability. Dean straightaway three. Rims off, Garcia there, stripped away by J.D. Collins. And he tracks it down on the baseline. So the big question is, what kind of defense will Louisville play uh, against West Virginia? And they start in a 2-3. Well, they're starting in the 2-3 zone, obviously, to really test West Virginia and also try to figure out again how they're going to be able to cover the shooters. And right there, you see Ellis Miles stepping out quickly on Kevin Pitznagel. Francisco Garcia, the junior from the Bronx, has been terrific in this tournament, averaging over 20. Taekwon D. Well, even against the West Virginia zone, Francisco Garcia able to penetrate in the paint, draw that zone in, and kick it out. Louisville seeking their eighth NCAA Final Four. The last time West Virginia headed to the Final Four, Jerry West was on the squad. Straight away, three Collins, and he answers. Well, J.D. Collins doesn't score an awful lot. He's more of a pass-first kind of point guard. But he is definitely a threat, as I mentioned. West Virginia usually puts five guys out there who can shoot the three. Palacios inside, and he's bumped. A foul coming up against the Mountaineers. Lenny, what are the keys to the game? Well, West Virginia has the battle. The birds on the boards, they can't control the tempo unless they control the glass. And obviously the Cardinals can't give up on defense. West Virginia will make them play full 35 seconds. Hare Bear picks up his first foul. Garcia off the mark, offensive rebound, Palacios, and he travels. Picked it up and put it down. The Mountaineers will get it back. And a little hesitation against that 1-3-1. One, one. See, the thing about John Beeline's 1-3-1 one, one zone is they will extend it. They will come out as far as half court and run that. And again, teams get a little confused. Here's some three-quarter court pressure by the Cardinals. West Virginia becomes only the sixth number seven seed to reach the Elite Eight since the field expanded in 1985. Gansey, he's been on fire. And that one off the mark. Here comes Garcia and Dean. And you wonder if Gansey's feeling the effects of that abdominal strain he's trying to recover from. And that will affect your shooting as you can't really extend. Louisville knocked off top seeded Washington. 93-79 in the semifinal. Miles pull up jumper. Way off the mark. Hair Bear with the rebound. Here come the Mountaineers. And Louisville gets back into the zone. And Gus, when you're working against the 2-3, the sweet spot is right there below the free throw line. You get a good guy who can handle the ball in there or in the short corner. And then you start reading the defender. That's where you got it, right Here's there. Here's Yanzita Pitznagel blocked from behind. Miles may have got a hand on it. Or either Garcia. It's a good thought for West Virginia, but excellent recovery by the defense. See, right now, West Virginia playing man. O'Bannon off the dribble. Oh. Loose ball, rebounded inside by Sally. And we talked about West Virginia battling on the boards. The trips down for Louisville have been one and out. So right now, West Virginia doing a good enough job to control the tempo of this game. West Virginia has defeated four ranked teams in the last 15 days. A double overtime victory against Wake Forest. They also knocked out Bob Knight and the Red Raiders from Texas Tech in a beautifully played game. Six of nine, West Virginia from the three-point line to start. Pitsnoggle forces one up. Taekwon Dean with the rebound. That time Pitsnoggle had difficulty recognizing Louisville was in a man-to-man. -man. Dean wide open. Short. Hair Bear with the rebound. The outlet pass. Sally wheeling down the lane. Stripped by Garcia. And out of bounds. 
take a look at the field goals and of those 11 shots obviously seven of them from beyond the arc and both teams making one and in the rebound category West Virginia even though they're minus two they've held Louisville to one and done in the last several possessions down and again for them it's about controlling the tempo when you control the board now we get an opportunity to see West Virginia in their man-to-man -man offense could you describe it for us, Lenny? What do they like to do? Well, they like to pass, go away, pass, cut, pass, bring someone in. They'll read the defenders. If the defender's playing them high for the three, they'll go back door. Pitts Noggle. Count in. Pitts Noggle has been on fire in Albuquerque. And that's the key. When you have a big man that can shoot like that, you pull the opposing big man out. You got an open floor situation. You got to respect Pitts Noggle. Taekwon Dean, short. Garcia. Back to Dean. One dribble. And Tyquan Dean may be feeling it after injuring his foot. O'Bannon. Louisville off the mark to start. Dean with the rebound and a foul. And speaking of outstanding play, that was a terrific possession by Louisville. Three extra chances. You know, we talked a moment ago about West Virginia controlling tempo by controlling the boards. It's getting away from them. And another foul. No, make that out of bounds as Garcia steps on the baseline. Hair Bear picked up his second foul and has to go to the bench. Beeline replaces him. Louisville picking up full court. Collins, terrific with the basketball. He is their floor general. And Louisville gets back into the 2-3 zone. Look at the flashers. First Sally, now Pitsnoggle at what I call that sweet spot of the zone. But Miles really playing almost a man to man against anybody getting into that spot. Collins, the kick, the beeline. Got it. Louisville is learning what an awful lot of other opponents are learning. There's anybody out there on the floor in a blue shirt capable of hitting a three. 9 3, West Virginia. Nobody's really giving them a chance to win this game. They've knocked off eight ranked opponents this year, and Dean throws it away. Again, you talk about respect. Watch Taekwon Dean go in to help, and he shouldn't help. As the ball goes into the middle, he helps out, and Beeline is stepping in for a wide open three on the J.D. Collins penetration. You have got to stay at home on the perimeter shooter. Louisville scoreless in the last five minutes. Tend to shoot for the Mountaineers. This is what I mean by not giving up on your defense. West Virginia will make your play to full 35. Collins down the lane, draws a foul. Tyquan Dean is off to a slow start. As you take a look at what he's done during the tournament thus far, he injured his foot in the semifinal against Washington. They say he's okay, but his shot looks a little off to start this game. Well, again, you have to watch his lateral movement and his ability to explode off of that foot. You know, elevation helps you with your range. Dean, one of five from the field. One. One. Collins in the tournament, averaging seven points and five dimes per game. West Virginia now on an 11 0 run. Garcia. Inside, Miles pounded down. Again, a little bit of play against the zone themselves, and Louisville just gets a nice quick entry pass along the baseline to their big people. And that's how you break zones. People think you do it with a three. No, you get it inside, force the zone to contract, and kick it back out for easier shots from the perimeter. West Virginia, three of seven from the field, three of five from the three-point line to start this game. Brandon Jenkins now with the ball game along with Taekwon Dean in the backcourt. Beeline rims off. Gansey offensive rebound and a new shot clock for the Mountaineers. Boy, Gansey has that knack 
of slashing in from the perimeter position to get offensive rebounds. He has an uncanny knack of understanding where the ball is coming off. Collins fires and hits. Woo. They are stroking it from downtown, folks. And John Beeline said they could play with anybody. And they're proving it so far. West Virginia, four of seven from the three. And Louisville almost turned it over, and they do. Five turnovers for the Cardinals. And that's what really makes you come out of that zone. Ball movement and the ability to find the open man. West Virginia does not give up as they run the clock down, but they will find that open man. So Rick Patino has a dilemma. Either play zone and allow West Virginia to kill you, shoot the three-pointer, or play man-to-man, -man and they can run their offense as Sally slashes to the basket. What do you do? Hey, it's a double-edged sword right now. Depending on whatever defense you play, West Virginia has found the answer thus far against Louisville, be it man or zone. Cardinals rattled early. Dean turns it over. Gansey, Sally. Beeline, quick release. Off the glass! And West Virginia, five of eight from the three-point line. Louisville is two of ten overall. And here's a stat for you. West Virginia is 18-0 this season when leading by ten or more points in a game. 43-5 and five overall under Coach Beeline. Well, it's definitely an uphill battle now for Louisville because of the tempo control of West Virginia. Otis George with the jam. And the Cardinals pick up full court. Beeline takes his time and gets it back to the point guard, J.D. Collins. I tell you, West Virginia with six field goals, five of them from beyond the arc. They've got six assists on all six field goals. That tells you something about their ball movement. No turnover so far for the Mountaineers. Inside, Gansey. Collins. Ball on the floor. And a jump ball is called. We'll stay on this end. And he is 30 and 9 in NCAA tournament play, ranking him third among active coaches in NCAA tournament winning percentage. And somebody stepped on the baseline. Well, Francisco Garcia deflected and got possession, but when he came down, his foot touched the line. And Gus, you talk about Rick Patino, his success has come through creativity as well as his ability to adapt to his team's personnel. And you know. This game isn't over for him yet. At this time, Thursday against Washington, Louisville trailed by seven, so they can make comeback. Dior Fisher knocks it down right off the bench. But it's hard to make comebacks when the 6'11 guy is shooting mid-range jumpers a step in front of the three-point line. West Virginia, 7 of 12 from the field, 58% shooting, 5 of 8 from the three-point line. Here's Dean, frees himself. Inside, Palacios to Jenkins for three. Palacios offensive rebound. And Fisher comes up with it. But Palacios has got to be an anchor down there, a lot stronger in his explosion to the basket instead of fading away. Louisville, when you get second chance opportunities, you can't waste them against this West Virginia team. Ball knocked away, stolen by Jenkins. Dean and Jenkins. Dean pulls up and knocks it in. Foot was on the line though, so he's only given two. Louisville can score points in bunches. 21 to 9. Gansey has it knocked away. Jenkins back to back steals. Palacios straight to the bucket. And it is. And that's the kind of pace Louisville wants and has to play against this West Virginia team. You can't allow them to sit there in the half court and pick you apart. You got to play aggressively. You got to create some turnover situations. And Gansey stumbles, loses possession, and there's the push right there. And we talk about Juan Palacio, 6'8, extraordinarily mobile. That's attacking the rim. Palacios, a freshman from Medellin, Colombia. Your Spanish lesson's getting good, brother. Rosetta <laughs> Stone. I know you've been listening. <laughs> 21 to 11. West Virginia. Seated number seven. Louisville 
Number four. Again, Louisville much more animated defensively, not sitting back passively in that zone. Sally cut off on the baseline. Ball reversal, pull up, jump shot, goes down for Darius Nichols. And if you've watched West Virginia for the first time, I'll tell you again, they always seem to have five guys on the floor capable of shooting threes, and that includes their 6'11 centers. Right now, West Virginia, six of nine from behind the arc. The zone causing Louisville some problems. Jenkins off the dribble elevates. Ball batted around D.R. Fisher with the rebound. 7.53 to play. The winner of this game will receive an invitation to the Final Four in St. Louis. West Virginia trying to get back for the first time since 1959 when Zeke from Cabin Creek was leading the way. Jerry West, who may be somewhere in the building. <laughs> Five to shoot. Beeline takes it from deep. Oh! And Rick Patino gets off the bench and shakes his head. What are you going to do? West Virginia, 7 of 10 from downtown. And right now, every player has in the gym range. Dean the other way. Sally with the rebound. See, Louisville now is settling, trying to answer and match the threes, and that's a huge mistake. They've got to get inside that zone, the mid-range, get a good shot up on the glass, and then attack it with second-chance opportunities. Mountaineers throw it away. Right now, Louisville trying to match the threes and not shooting it well. you got to get inside the zone, get the ball up on the glass, and attack the rim. Francisco Garcia with his first basket of the game. He's now one of two from the field. And that was a mid-range shot. You got to get inside of the zone right now. Pat Beeline almost traveled. Almost traveled, but didn't inside. Pitts Noggle, it's knocked off of the knee of Palacios. Mountaineers, 9 of 14 from the field, 7 of 10 from downtown. Pat Beeline is 3 of 4. Here he is. He's banked one in. He's hit one from the hash mark. Pitts Noggle drops up on the baseline, double pump, and a kiss. Well, again, against the man-to-man, -man, Kevin Pitznagel, very patient down on the block. Worked Miles into position that he wanted him in before making that bank shot. That's an improvement in Pitznagel's game. Taekwon Dean. West Virginia remaining in that 1-3-1 zone. Dean frees himself on the hop to the bucket. Comes up short. Pitznagel clears it. But those shots are there for Louisville. They can't abandon the inside game just to try to shoot threes. Nichols, stop and start. Hair Bear wide open. West Virginia, 69% shooting. And they just can't miss from downtown right now. 8 of 11. 32 to 13. They've hit their last five threes. We talked about Louisville's ability to come back. But their medal is going to be tested here. With all the threes being made, they can't abandon their defense, and they got to continue to attack. Garcia and a whistle on the baseline. And look at the three-point shooting for the Mountaineers. And you're right, Gus, demoralizing when you can shoot the three with such range. You know, you talk about playing good, strong defense, and you can't believe. Look how far out Patrick Beeline is. You couldn't even see the three-point line in that shot. Rick Pitino with an interesting dilemma. They play zone, they hit threes. They play man-to-man, -man, they hit threes. These are the first free throws for Louisville, which tells me that they haven't been attacking the rim as they can. They haven't been drawing fouls. They have put no pressure on the West Virginia defense up until now. Collins picked up the dribble. Looked like he dragged his pivot foot, but gets away with it. J.D. from Houston, Texas. Beeline, Fitznagel, Gansey, and Young. 
And a good Louisville has to stay in this man to man, if nothing else, to cover shooters. 10 to shoot. Collins guarded by Dean. Crossover dribble, gets to the basket, comes up short. Taekwon Dean with the rebound. He was terrific against Washington on the glass with nine boards. In the corner, Palacios. A little more like the Louisville Cardinals. Strong defense and then pushing the ball to get an easy shot. And a foul called Garcia riding Young around the corner. Well, after the missed layup, the push, and they're in an open floor situation, you find the spot up jump shooter. You know, you have that opportunity, you got the opportunity to put it on the floor when the defense isn't set. But in order to do that, Louisville has to make some stops, command the boards, and get it out. The winner of this game will advance to St. Louis. And a trip to the final four. Young, guarded by Miles. Gansey, quiet so far offensively, no points. He had 29 against Wake Forest, 19 in the overtime period. Here's Gansey, Young fires. Wow, lights out. Nine of 12 from the three-point line in the first half. The West Virginia Mountaineers lead the Cardinals from Louisville 35-18. Jenkins pulls up. Miles is there to foul call. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you. 35-18, West Virginia with the lead over Louisville. West Virginia a seven, Louisville a four. And Lenny, what's the story with this West Virginia team this year? Well, this is a team that started off hot, 10-0 their first 10 games. You know, they beat uh, a couple of good teams, NC State, LSU, and then they won on a two and seven bender. And it wasn't until February 5th, and I think West Virginia fans will circle that date. Kevin Pritznov will put back into the starting lineup. He's averaged 17 points a game since then. West Virginia has gone 12 and 3. They truly believe in themselves and in the system. 38-18. What a surprise. Nobody giving West Virginia a chance to win this game. Nobody more surprised than Rick Pitino. And I think it's not because of the lack of effort of his team, but again, the range with which West Virginia has been shooting. I mean, it's been unbelievable some of the threes they've made. West Virginia has hit its last seven three-point shots. They're shooting 68% from the field, 76% from the three-point line, 10 of 13. Taekwon Dean, got it. Well, you got to pick your spots for the three, and no one does it better than Taekwon Dean. But again, you cannot abandon your mid-range game and the ability to get in the paint against West Virginia. And once it goes on the backboard, you need your offensive rebounders. But here is where the telling of the tale is. You got to be able to string together some stops if you're going to cut this deficit. Pitch Noggle turns it over. Dean the other way. He's got Garcia, Palacios, Miles, and O'Bannon on the court with him. Here's a high pick and roll. Garcia splits the defense. Nice pass. And a good recognition. It looked like a zone, but once again, man to man. And Francisco Garcia in the open floor does a great job. If you're Rick Pitino, you have to say to your guys, what goes up must come down. They can't continue to shoot the ball this way. Well, and they got off to a hot start against Texas Tech the other night and cooled down considerably in the second half. But you've got the challenge shooter. You leave them wide open, you know, they'll keep shooting in those lofty percentages. Yancey. Beeline, Sally, Collins, Pitznaga for the West Virginia Mountaineers. And they'll work that clock down. Seven to shoot now. Collins. Turns the corner, steps back, picks it up. Beeline again. And it's a shot clock violation. And that was one of the better defensive sequences for Louisville. They did not give up on the defense, played a full 35 seconds, stayed down in their defensive stance, took away the cuts, and forced a long last second shot on the shot clock. That's what Rick Pitino is looking for. Louisville has been here before. Earlier this season, they were at Cincinnati down big. Rick Pitino made some 
terrific halftime adjustments, came back and defeated the Bearcats. I don't think there's much of an adjustment he has to make. He's just got to get his guys to commit to defense as they did on that possession. Garcia answers. Francisco Garcia. Louisville on an 8-0 run after trailing by as many as 20. 38 to 26. Well, Louisville would surely love to make a stop here. That means they strung together a couple of them that feel so much better about themselves going into halftime. Gansey. 38 seconds remaining in the first half. Beeline knocked away. Palacios to Jenkins. He can't hold on. Here's Gansey off the dribble. Flipped it up and a whistle. And that was a case of being in a hurry. Juan Palacios, the freshman, has got to understand time and score. There's no rush. You got possession. You got the last shot. Instead, it turns in to two free throws as Mike Gansey puts his body on the line. Francisco Garcia picked up his second. And that sends Mike Gansey to the line. What a story for this young man from right outside of Cleveland, Ohio. He started his college career at St. Bonaventure. Eventually transferred after the St. Bonaventure program got into a little trouble. Was looking for a school and a coach that he could fit in with. And he was familiar with Coach Beeline transferred and has been having an outstanding NCAA tournament. As I mentioned, when Wake Forest and West Virginia met, West Virginia beat him 111, 105 in double overtime. Gansey had 29 points, 19 coming in the overtime periods. 24 seconds remaining, 40 to 26. Shot clock turned off. Louisville looking for a momentum builder as they prepare to head into the locker room. And here's Francisco Garcia. Miles inside, and he's fouled. I'll tell you, John Beeline was screaming for his team the foul. They're not in the penalty. So they could have stopped the momentum of Louisville. The unfortunate part for the Mountaineers is they fouled the guy in the act of shooting. But Beeline was running up and down the sidelines, telling his guys to foul, make Louisville take it out again, and have to reset their offense and take their momentum away. Rick Pitino telling his team they've got a foul to give. Louisville has been to the free throw line only three times. They're two of three as Miles gets the second. Rick Pitino making some substitutions to keep his guys out of foul trouble with 4.5 to go. So Garcia and Dean both check out of the game. Collins. And it's a travel. Interesting. He puts Brad Giannini in to play Collins, hoping that he might foul him again because they have a foul again. And Collins travels. So the turnover obviously gives Louisville an advantage. Louisville was about to give a foul. Instead, they get a gift. Cardinals have trailed in this ball game. 38-18, largest lead inside. Miles, no. And that is the end of the first half. 20 minutes remaining in regulation. The winner advancing to St. Louis and the final four. The biggest halftime deficit for the Cardinals this year, 12 points. Taekwon Dean in the corner. And Miles with the rebound and put back. And that's the name of the game for Louisville. Second chance opportunities. They had zero second chance points in the first half. They've got to get their bigs on the board and corral the misses. Louisville starts out in that man-to-man -man gust, and you know they know they have to play the full 35 seconds, but they seem to be in it down in their defensive stances. Hey, Bear, 
excuse me, Hair Bear. Ball knocked away. And here's Taekwon Dean to Miles. Palacios off the dribble. No. Well, that was a good decision by Ellis Miles. On the fast break, he didn't have a shot. He stood on the post and found somebody to cutting Palacios to the basket. Again, another high percentage opportunity for Louisville. So Palacios goes to the line. Sally picked up his second. Seven points, three rebounds for Palacios. And Palacios misses a pair. 38-18. The biggest lead for West Virginia and a foul in the backcourt. Taekwon Dean called for a hold. But you can see Louisville really applying pressure. You know, there's the rebound right there and trying to keep the ball out of Collins' hands is Dean. Sally goes down hard. Now Collins. Sally Collins, Hair Bear, Fitznagel, and Gansey on the court for the Mountaineers. And Gus West Virginia, 14 and 0 when they shoot 40 percent from beyond the arc. Ball tipped up and in. Fitznagel. Right now they're shooting over 70 percent from beyond the three-point range. So if history is an indicator, it bodes very well for the Mountaineers. Kevin Pitsnoggle with 10 points. And over the last 15 games, he shot 47% from the field. That one good. 10-point lead now for the Mountaineers. And we'll head the other way. Louisville starting to ratchet it up on defense and we were talking during halftime and you told me that Louisville has to go against some of their natural defensive instincts when taking on West Virginia. Well certainly around the perimeter you have to stay at home the balls on the weak side and there's penetration you can't leave a guy on the weak side and try to get into the paint to help you got to stay at home. O'Bannon again rims up miles offensive rebound and an offensive foul. He leaned in and realized that he did run over Hair Bear. But this is what Louisville has to do. Again, corral the misses right there. There's the bump. Kill time bump, and Miles knew it. Congratulates the official on a good call. Ed Rare Hightower. as that might be. That's right, Ed Hightower. <laughs> one of the best officials in all of college basketball. Timmy Higgins as well, officiating this game. Hair Bear, the bounce pass. Pitts Nagel banks it home. West Virginia not afraid to attack pressure either. The mistake Louisville made is that Francisco Garcia allowed Gansey to get past them. You've got to get down, play defense, but make them go sideline to sideline, not let West Virginia turn the corner on them. In the corner, Palacios. Miles, another rebound. Quick fire. Tight Bondi. And here come the Cardinals. They've got the swagger back. 44 35. Opening minutes of the second half. Sally penetrates and hits. Tyrone Sally has been kind of lost with all the acclaim going to Pitts, Noggle, and Gansey, but throughout the year, he's been West Virginia's best player, and we see why. His ability not only to shoot the three, but to beat you off the bounce. Sally misses a free throw, batted out of bounds, and Louisville will receive. So Rick Patino told our Tracy Wolfson at halftime that he's going to allow Garcia to run the point and handle the 1-3-1. They're going to press a little bit and do some things they haven't done before, which scares them. Well, one of the things, as I mentioned before, that, it, that they didn't do in the first half was second chance points. They got five thus far. They've got to keep on the offensive glass. Palacios, nice catch. Louisville starting to get inside that 1-3-1 zone. And with the smallest guy on the floor, J.D. Collins running that back line, you just saw the ability to throw over that zone.
Pitts Noggle backing his man down. Ganzi from straight away. Louisville better tighten up. We mentioned you cannot leave the perimeter, guys. You got to go against your defensive instincts and stay at home. Taekwon D rise and fire. And hits. Boy, Maybe Louisville, it's the altitude. I was going to say, Louisville looking a little like West Virginia did in the first half. West Virginia, 11 of 15 from the three-point line. That was the fourth three for Taekwon Dean. He had five against Washington in the semifinal. Hair Bear, Bitsnoggle, great ball fake. Off the heel, long rebound, Sally, and a new shot clock for the Mountaineers. And boy, you've got to hustle on the long shots. The long rebound opportunity missed by Louisville. Hair Bear step back, count it. Woo. These kids are really drilling it today. 12 of 17, 70% shooting for the West Virginia Mountaineers from the three-point line. 52 to 40. And you heard the buzz in the crowd. A lot of people saying, oh, they can't shoot like that in the second half. Well, think again. Reminds you of Villanova against Georgetown. As a matter of fact, this is the 20th anniversary of the big upset. Miles, Palacios there, no. And that was just a lack of patience by Ellis Miles. You know, he shouldn't be shooting the three. He should be corralling the misses. Move the ball. Sally curling down the lane. He's tripped and fouled. And the winner of this game will take on the winner of Arizona and Illinois in St. Louis, 52 to 40. Mountaineers trying to pull off the upset and advance to the final four for the first time since 1959. During that year, they went to the national championship game, lost by one to Cal. Nichols, Hair Bear, Fisher, along with Sally at Beeline on the court. Eight to shoot. Beeline, bounce pass, knocked away, picked up Sally, and a foul. Offensive foul called against Tyrone Sally. Boy, Louisville, very lucky. Sally gets possession. And a nice job by Dean to step in there and take that charge. The one thing Rick Pitino has to be happy about is the fact that his team committed to defense, stayed down all 35 seconds, and forced that turnover. Rick Pitino also told us that he told his team at halftime, look, we're down by 13. We should be down by 25. Go back out there, and if we can score two points each minute, we can come back and win this thing, but we've got to hit shots. No time for misses. And again, I believe it doesn't necessarily have to be a three. Louisville has settled for threes on too many occasions when they've had opportunities to get inside of the West Virginia defense and get mid-range jumpers and points in the paint, as well as second-chance opportunities. Otis George, Miles, Taekwon Dean, Jenkins, and Garcia. Taekwon up top. That's what I mean by settling for the three. Too early. You got to work it. Louisville trying to get after him now on defense. Fisher travels. Let's take a look at the top three scorers for this Louisville team. Well, Taekwon Dean obviously shooting a three. And that's his game. But, you know, Francisco Garcia particularly not able to get the ball and penetrate. Either an unwillingness to do it or an inability to do it. And he's got to have more touches. Now they shift Jenkins to the point. West Virginia changing defenses. They're in man to man right now. O'Bannon off the dribble and a foul. And that's the mid range shot that's available. So Beeline called for the foul, his first. Three team fouls against West Virginia, four against Louisville. Larry O'Bannon at the line. O'Bannon. 
Ten point game. Full court pressure by the Cardinals. Nichols straight down the lane, knocked away, snaps down to the air, O'Bannon. Here comes O'Bannon, in and out, down the lane. Count it, and the foul. Louisville within eight. You get back in these games with your defense. And an excellent job collapsing on the ball handler. And then, in transition, it's just one-on-one -on -one right here as Patrick Beeline had no chance. Ellis Miles understands it's all about defense, all about conversion. Eli called for the foul as second. Larry O'Bannon, one of the quiet heroes on this team. He's from Louisville. Adds the free throw. Eight points for O'Bannon. 52 to 45. Let's see if West Virginia starts to tighten up as time winds down. Young, Fisher, and he's fouled. But what a job Fisher did in fighting and establishing his position down low. He gave Young an excellent target. Young on the drive to the left of your screen. Fisher just cleared out the area, got a man on his back. Miles caught for his third foul. Dior Fisher has been such an unselfish player. Lost his starting job, and then when he got healthy, after Pitts Noggle had taken it. You look at D.R. Fisher. He's a shot blocker. He can score a little bit, but he's the best free throw shooter on the team, around 86% from the line. All-time leading shot blocker in West Virginia history, 18th in NCAA history. That's a rare combination, blocking shots and knocking down free throws with regularity. 54-45. West Virginia back in the 1-3-1. Jenkins explodes. Skip pass. Dean sets his feet. Count it. Tight one Dean. And that's five threes. They're getting it off penetration. Woo! I think they found the combination to that lockdown West Virginia defense in the first half. Louisville taking their time, working their way back in this game. Cardinals so active on defense now. Fisher looking. Young. Young step back 16 footer. Knocked out of bounds. We'll head the other way. As you take a look at the field goal shooting, West Virginia still shooting a high percentage. 12 threes. But you can feel the momentum start to shift in the favor of the Cardinals who have trailed by as many as 20 in this game. Jenkins, O'Bannon, scoreless in the first half. Larry O'Bannon, he has eight in the second half. But well, West Virginia's had five turnovers to one for Louisville this half, so more opportunities for the Cardinals. Otis George knocks down the mid-range jump shot, and we've got a four-point game with 11.27 to play. And that is the combination right there. To the defense, mid-range jumpers, offensive rebounding. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> Collins, five to shoot, works his way back to Organzi, lost it. West Virginia unraveling now under this intense pressure. And let's take a look at Kevin Pitsnoggle and Patrick Beeline. But well, Louisville defense is really ball hawking. And Pitsnoggle and Beeline, while they were in the game and Pitsnoggle is back, can't get the touches because the defense is really pressuring the passer. Jenkins slicing and a foul. 
And Gus, you can see Louisville really starting to feel confident about their ability to attack this zone. First half, they settled for the three-point shots. This half, they're really making their way into that paint. And it's a number of guys who are doing it off the bounce. So Patino has made his adjustment. Let's see what Coach Beeline decides to do. As Sally picked up his fourth foul. Both of these men, chess masters at the game of basketball. Jenkins. Francisco Garcia comes back in. Sally heads to the bench with his fourth foul. He has six points. Well, I expect West Virginia on defense to go back to that zone. Offensively, if they're playing against a man, you can look for them to take more threes as the real slasher on that team for West Virginia is Sally. And he's on the bench. 11 2 run for the Cardinals. Three point ball game after trailing by 20 in the first half, 13 at halftime. Louisville's doing a much better job to force the ball handlers from West Virginia side to side instead of letting them get in the paint. B line, extra pass, pit snuggle. Got it. Once again, leaving the jump shooter. And you are absolutely right, partner. They went right back to their bread and butter, the three point shot. 15 for Pitznagel and a blocking foul on the baseline. Again, take a look at Pitznagel just pop out right of your screen, and George just leaves him. Once again, George goes to help. You can't do that on the weak side. You know you got a jump shooter there. He pops me on the arc and makes him pay. That was the first West Virginia field goal in the last five minutes. Beeline got a hand on it, but Palacios takes it away. And look at the big fella push off and is called for the offensive foul. Boy, now is not the time to make these kinds of mistakes. Palacios didn't need that arm. Beeline, he had head and shoulders past Beeline. You just keep going. You don't need the arm to push the guy off. Collins forced to pick up his dribble in no man's land. And it's batted away. Uh, Pitznagel picks it back up. And the Louisville bench continually calling for that five second count. In the corner, Gansey from deep. Again! 60-51. Oh. West Virginia, 14 of 19 from the three point line. Timeout, Louisville. Cardinals with the basketball. They've won 12 straight games, 21 of their last 22. Only four losses on the season for Louisville. Taekwon Dean again. Miles is there for the follow. Iowa, Kentucky, Memphis, Houston. The only four losses for Louisville this season. 60 to 53. Eight minutes. 44 seconds remaining in the second half. Back door, Beeline. Goaltending the call, count the basket. And that's the wrinkle that West Virginia will give you when you start playing guys for the three. You step up too high, as Garcia did. They'll take you back door in a minute. Tremendous ability to read defenders on the fly. O'Bannon deals it inside, knocked away. Somehow kicks it back out to Garcia. O'Bannon for three. Got it. And Gansey, boy, he's trying to battle Ellis Miles down low and getting the worst of it. Miles was called for a foul once before, but as I mentioned, Gansey has a way of slashing in, trying to get rebounds, and you got to put a body on him. Larry O'Bannon playing with the heart of a lion. He's a senior. All 11 of his points coming in the second half. Collins, Gansey, the kick, Hair Bear! <laughs> 15 of 20 from the three-point line. The West Virginia Mountaineers are seven minutes and 33 seconds away from the final four. Holding on to a nine-point lead, Garcia on the move. 
beautifully done for the young man from the Bronx. And that's why Louisville doesn't have to settle for the threes. They've got the ability to penetrate, get the higher percentage shot. Timeout, West Virginia. In the NCAA tournament, they've gone on a terrific run, beating Creighton 63-61. Wake in double overtime, 111-105. Here in Albuquerque, managing to hold on to beat Bob Knight. And the Red Raiders from Texas Tech. Now they've got Louisville on the ropes. A lot of time remaining, though. Collins, nice pass, hits Noggle short on it. But it's tracked down by Hare there. Fitznagel fires. But well, Ellis Miles went down, kind of hurt himself, never able to recover as Fitznagel popped to his favorite spot with Miles still on the ground around the paint area. Sixty-eight, fifty-eight, West Virginia. Again, West Virginia changing defenses. One, three, one, man to man. Right now they're in the man. Garcia to the basket. Offensive foul. His fourth. This is where you have to exercise judgment. Mid-range, pull up right there. Instead, Garcia tries to get all the way to the basket. Pitznagel's not going to block his shot. You got to be able to take it off the bounce and pull up for that mid-range jumper in the man or in the zone. It's there. And you have to credit J.D. Collins for West Virginia. The 5'10 point guard has done a really solid job of handling this local pressure, and he turns it over right there. But he's been pressed throughout this second half, and as you mentioned, again, primary, primary ball handler, Louisville understands that, and they've been trying their best to keep it out of his hand. Dean steps up. A three. Got it. Seven-point lead for the Mountaineers. Taekwon Dean, 20 points. He's hit six threes. Ball knocked out of bounds. Taekwon Dean hurt himself in the last game as he knocks down his 6-3 there. He grabs at his hamstring. Looks like maybe a slight tweak. He's got to come off the floor. And he's been the most efficient offensive player for Louisville. And at a time when they need guys to put the ball in the basket, this is a tough situation for the Cardinals. He cramped up against Washington on Thursday. Also hurt his foot. Looks like he may be cramping up now. Trainer is trying to stretch out his calf. Pitznagel, another three. Oh, man. Pitznagel has been unconscious in this tournament. He has 21 points, five threes. West Virginia, 71-61. He ties a regional record with 17 three-pointers for this West Virginia ball club. 17 of 22. Look at Jenkins overplaying Collins. And they force a turnover. Palacios. And Garcia makes it in. That's what I mean. So much pressure on Collins. I'm trying to keep him from getting the ball. A lot of contact there. Kevin Fitznagel for the Mountaineers has been terrific. 21 points, 5 of 7 from the three-point line, and he's managed to always come up with that big basket when they need it. Here he is. Otis George paying a lot more attention to Pitznagel when he pops to the top. Pitznagel, very crafty. So you can make him put it on the floor, make him pump fake that throws Pitznagel out of his rhythm, but you gotta guard him. Hair Bear from deep. Mountaineers finally missed one. Stop and start Garcia. Oh, beautiful touch. Francisco with 13. And a foul in the backcourt against the Cardinals. And 
it may be against Garcia. If it is, is it's fifth. Well, you take a look at Pitts Novel right here on the other end, and every guy who's guarded him has been late. And that's because they've spent too much time in the paint and not enough time following Pitts Novel. And I believe Francisco Garcia has fouled out of this game. He has. Francisco Garcia, 13 points, eight assists, and four rebounds, and he'll have to watch the next 402. Garcia, the young man from the Bronx, will not be returning for a senior season. Take a look at the play. Right here on the double team, he kind of grabbed him around the back a little bit, ever so slightly, but just enough for the official to make the call. It's been a rough few years for Francisco Garcia. He lost his brother in the Bronx, shot and killed. His mother is living in a situation that uh, he isn't comfortable with. Therefore, Coach Patino has really said it's okay to come out of college and head to professional basketball to help support your family. Fouling out with 402 remaining. He's not happy. And Collins will go to the line and shoot free throws. Well, right now, obviously, Tyrone Sally, the best player for West Virginia on the bench, but he's only got four fouls. He can come back in. Garcia gone for good. So right now, advantage West Virginia because they have the use of Sally in a breakdown need situation. They've got Sally to call on. West uh, Louisville doesn't have Francisco Garcia to call on in that same situation. Second free throw off the mark, so Taekwon Dean limping. Back in the game, somebody else will have to step up for Louisville. Down 72 to 67. O'Bannon has been good here in the second half. Gets to the basket and draws a foul. And John Beeline has been at almost every level coaching basketball from junior college, Division II, Division I, mid-major, and now at West Virginia. He's three minutes and 47 seconds away from a trip to the final four, but Louisville will not go away quietly. O'Bannon with a terrific second half, scoring 14 points and three assists. All 14 points make it 15 coming in the second half. 72 to 69. Louisville, Louisville pressure Louisville. Louisville scored on his last six possessions. So they've obviously got some momentum going and for defensive purposes freshman Lorenzo Wade guarding the ball handler hair bear and a foul on the floor and this will go against the Cardinals coach John Beeline grew up a huge basketball fan as a matter of fact his uncles were coaches at Buffalo Niagara Falls and Syracuse between the high school and college levels his father Arthur a laborer and his mom Josephine mother of nine hair bear at the free throw line <laughs> 74 69 West Virginia 333 away Look at the zone right here. Again, really trying to match up with the shooters. O'Bannon off the heel. Dean with the offensive rebound. Now Dean. And again, you don't have to settle for the three. Just a five-point deficit. Make sure you get a good look or get to the free throw line. The kick. Dean, the fadeaway. No. Rebounded inside. O'Bannon who banks it in. And that's the third thing to do. Hit the offensive glass. The zone is easier to rebound against. You got gaps. Loose ball picked up. Collins diving face first. And the possession arrow in the favor of the Mountaineers. And I think J.D. Collins took the worst of that. Diving looked like he slammed his head in O'Bannon's shoulder. But here, a terrific job by Jenkins going behind. And wow. Another look. Jenkins from behind slaps it loose. And look at Collins putting his body on the line and he's rubbing his head and I don't blame him slow to get up he's got to be a little woozy but that just goes to show you what these kids are leaving on the floor two and minutes and 52 seconds remaining 
74 to 71 West Virginia with the lead for well, the first time your school has gone to the final four in 45 years I'd say you put some effort into it Air Bear Collins cut off by Otis George look at the pressure on the ball can't throw it inside the pitch novel and coach Beeline quite often says a prayer before the game he lost both of his parents his father didn't get a chance to watch him coach when he received the game at when he received the job at Canisius and he always says a prayer before the game honoring his mom and his dad five to shoot Sally turnaround jumper no Taekwon Dean with the rebound once again important for Louisville to recognize time and score three-point deficit they don't need a three put pressure on the defense high percentage shot possibly go to the line O'Bannon has been the leader George takes it and George says right back at you Pitts Noggle 74 73 155 to go West Virginia Louisville playing for a trip to the final four Pitts Noggle for three become a legend in the state of West Virginia. He's the only native West Virginian on the team. I tell you what, again, that's right. Otis George got Pitsnoggle. George stuck down in the paint as Pitsnoggle pops outside beyond the arc. Sooner or later, and it's probably going to be too late for Louisville if they let it happen again, you've got to know where he is, and you've got to guard him regardless of what's going on in the paint. Bad and inside wide open. Palacios lays it in. And we've got a two point game. Again, continue to attack in the paint for Louisville. That's how they got back. Taekwon Dean playing with tender hamstrings. Kevin Pitsnoggle guarded closely by George. Picks up the dribble. 106 to go. Hair Bear, pick and roll, stops, fires, and George with the rebound. Louisville can tie it up here with a two. And you're right, they need to go for the two. Rick Pitino is going to call timeout and talk about it. Palacios inbounding the ball. Francisco Garcia, their top scorer, has fouled out for the Cardinals. Here's O'Bannon. He's been sensational. To the bucket! Louisville's got to recognize good defense. They get possession back. You got to make a stop. A trip to the final four on the line. About a three second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Coach Beeline's going to let him play. Collins, Sally, Hair Bear, Pitsnoggle, Gansey, Collins off the dribble to the bucket. Block. Palacios grabs it. Tyquan Dean looks at the clock on the baseline. No! Pitch down on the rebound, and we're going to overtime. Holy mackerel! Louisville's played tremendous defense to come all the way back from the deficit. 13 points at halftime. But still in all, without Francisco Garcia, they've had to put the pressure on Larry O'Bannon and Tyquan Dean to provide the offense. Louisville has not played in overtime game this year West Virginia is 2 and 0 in overtime including a double overtime victory against Wake Forest in this tournament Miles Jenkins Taekwon Dean pulls up off the heel batted out O'Bannon with the rebound and he's fouled oh that's a tough foul Tyrone Sally hustling for the ball couldn't get his balance and he is out take a look at the long rebound long shots long rebound George taps it out, and Sally going after the ball just makes contact. Tough break. So Sally fouls out with four points and three rebounds. So right now, Gus, both teams without their slashers. You take a look at the situation here. West Virginia not really in foul trouble beyond Sally. 
and neither is Louisville. Miles with three, but as a senior, he knows how to play with that. And even though he only had four points, he's a terrific threat out on the floor, and as I said, can break down defenses in an overtime game. When you're more prone to play half-court offense, Sally is the kind of guy that West Virginia could certainly use. Larry O'Bannon at the line. It's the front end. And Louisville has taken the lead. Their last lead of this game, three zip. West Virginia led by 20 at one time. O'Bannon, 21 points in the second half. All of his points coming at crunch time. Louisville trailed by 13. Now West Virginia has to fight back. Well, you talk about switching at the top now. Ellis Miles making sure that somebody stays with Pitts Noggles. Nine to shoot for D-line. Gansey's been quiet. Drives and draws a foul. Wow. Wow. Gansey obviously quicker than George gets head and shoulders by him. That looked like it happened simultaneously. The ball off his foot as well as the contact. And that is the 10th team foul against Louisville. So West Virginia in the double bonus. Mike Gansey playing with a pulled muscle in his stomach. Misses the first. And you see Ellis Miles stepping in, saying, block out. Step in and block out. That's a senior. That's what leadership is about. Second one good for Gansey. 79-78. Our game was tied at 77 at the end of regulation. These two teams playing for a trip to St. Louis and the final four. Look at the extension now of the 1-3-1 zone. It puts pressure as well as covers the shooters. Jenkins with the big block at the end of regulation. Dean. Oh. Taekwon. And isn't this reminiscent of the way West Virginia started the game? Now it's Louisville's turn. Taekwon Dean, 7 of 17 from the three-point line. 82-78. B-line. Step back. Got it off. And a foul behind the three-point line. Ed Hightower's checking it all out right now. He's going to say that the shot occurred before, I mean, the foul occurred before the shot. Take a look at Beeline right here, nice fake. And George just rings his arms out and stops him. And you see the shot wasn't taken. So instead of getting three free throws, Beeline only gets two because obviously Louisville in the double bonus. Beeline, a 67% free throw shooter. West Virginia. As a team today, 10 of 13. Second one good. 82-80. Beeline with 13 points. And considering the way West Virginia was shooting the threes, that actually turned out to be a pretty good foul by George. Knocked away. Beautiful defense. Collins to Gansy. And we're tied at 82. What a game. In Albuquerque. And a timeout on the floor. And with Francisco Garcia on the bench, Taekwon Dean, his partner, is really holding up his end of the bargain. Great individual and team performances in this game. These kids are just laying everything on the line this afternoon. Here's O'Bannon, Jenkins, Dean. Who's running the baseline, trying to get free. Miles and George. Jenkins finds Dean. Wheels inside, lost it. George with it and banks it in. Well, Dean did a great job of avoiding the offensive foul with that spin, but lost the handle. But if you got big guys hanging around the basket, good things will happen. My man Otis, 4-4 from the field. Eight points in this game. Pitts noggle and a foul. He'll shoot two. Taekwon Dean draws an awful lot of attention, drives baseline, and it was just enough as Pitznagel took a bit of a flop. That spin avoided that charge. Kevin Pitznagel off 
the mark. His first time at the line this afternoon. George heads out of the game. Palacios replaces him. And the loudest applause for that miss was from Otis George, who knew he made a mistake in letting Pitts and Ivo get away from him. Don't forget, coming up next, Arizona, Illinois. The tip will be at 7-13. Louisville by a point. Again, look at the extension of his own right now. They now respect the jump shooting. O'Bannon blocking foul. Collins trying to draw the charge. And again, we talked about the strength of getting the ball in the paint against the zone, not settle for the three, get the mid-range jumper. And O'Bannon does a nice job and draws the foul in the process. So Collins picks up his first. O'Bannon scoreless at halftime. He has 21 now. He's 7 of 7 from the free throw line. Look at that number. The senior turning it on. Taekwon Dean is in all kinds of play, uh, kinds of pain as he's doubled over Seems in to be front of the Louisville bench. Yeah. Therefore, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Wade, a freshman from Vegas, will have to come in and watch. When West Virginia gets possession, the last time Wade came in, Hair Bear recognized it was a freshman on him and took him all the way to the basket. You know, that type of penetration is awfully dangerous the way West Virginia shoots threes. Taekwon Dean in a lot of pain. O'Bannon. 23 for Larry O'Bannon. All coming in the second half. Louisville picks up full court. Lorenzo Wade, number one for Louisville, the freshman. In the game, guarding Gansey. And we'll see if West Virginia picks on the freshman. Here's Gansey. Pitts novel, pump fake, takes a three. Batted around Palacios with the rebound. And that's what you have to do to Kevin Pitts novel. He's a great catch and shoot guy, but when he's out of his rhythm, when he has the pump fake, he's not nearly as accurate. West Virginia needs a stop. Back door, off the rim, Palacios! Louisville up 88-83, largest lead of the game for the Cardinals. Hair Bear, the teardrop. Palacios, another rebound and a foul. Louisville, fighting, scratching, clawing their way back into this game with their best player on the bench. Both of their best players on the bench. Garcia has fouled out. Taekwon Dean has cramps. And Juan Palacios will go to the line. 13 points, six rebounds. He's 0 for 2 from the stripe today. Needs these two to keep it to at least a two-possession ball game, but needs one of two to make a two-possession ball game. Masterful coaching performance by Rick Patino. Palacios missed a pair. Out of bounds will head the other way. John Beeline, though, you know he has something up his sleeve. But well, if they had made that two, it would have made it a three-possession game. It remains two. And the way West Virginia shoots the threes, Louisville has to be cognizant, no help, especially on the perimeter. They've hit 18 threes today. Hair Bear to the basket in the corner. Gets it! Hair Bear tracking it down, and he steps on the sideline, out of bounds. And you don't think that Ellis Miles' eyes just shot wide open when that pass was made to Gansey. Once again, stuck under the basket, has to rush the shooter. And very fortunate. Taekwon Dean hobbles back into the game. What an effort by this young man from New Jersey. And a whistle. And this foul will be called against the Mountaineers. Well, one of the reasons you rush Dean back on the floor, he's an 82% free throw shooter. Ellis Miles, on the other hand, 57 percent and that's who West Virginia went after take a look at Dean right there and look at Beeline 
pushes actually pushes Miles into the back of Gamzee and both of those guys came up a little shaky. Miles still looking to see if there's any blood. But you knew they were going to go after Miles. 57% from the line. As West Virginia looking to trade free throws for three point opportunities on the other end. Free throws for possession. And the numbers on Miles today. He will be shooting two. Louisville in the double bonus. Now Ed Hightower is at the scorer's table. And I think it's uh, an issue of a substitution as Wade pops up and will be set back to the bench. And I think Wade could not come in because the ball hadn't been inbound. He hadn't been out of full possession. So Miles, two big ones. Again, even though it's a two possession ball game, West Virginia can take the lead with scores in two possession. Miles had to hit has to hit this one in order to at least assure a tie. Good touch on the second. 89-83. Collins. A minute to play in overtime. Last chance to dance for one of these teams. Collins straight to the basket. Blocked by Miles. What a block. Coming from the weak side. Beeline with the rebound. Mountaineers have to hurry. Back door. Hair Bear can't get the bounce. And a foul. Louisville will shoot free throws again. Obviously, you saw the look of dejection on Tyrone Sally's face. A senior, he struggled through this program when it was at its depths, only to stick around for John Beeline and have him bring it to the verge of the Final Four. And as a senior, he knows this is the last time around. He missed both, but it's taken away by Wade, who's fouled. Missed the second one so badly, Lenny, that West Virginia didn't know how to rebound it. Well, they didn't block out, and again, that's the tendency when you miss it. In one part of your mind, you're thinking it didn't touch anything, and therefore a violation. But that split second allowed Wade to get to that loose ball. And again, it's been about athleticism here in the second half. Louisville's defense, their ability to penetrate, and then we saw in the last couple of plays the block shot by Ellis Miles and the tip in on the other end. That's been their advantage from the beginning and they haven't been able to use that advantage until right here in overtime. Rick Pitino yelling at his team not to foul. 39.8 to go. Collins. Driving. And he fouled. He's fouled as Coach Patino just looks out on the court and shakes his head. Clock stops with 31.3 to go. And again, it's a case of recognizing time and score. You got a nine point lead. You know, that's three possessions for West Virginia to try to get back in 30 some odd seconds. The odds are against them, so why stop the clock and allow them to put points on the board? Young players at home have to understand what time and score situations are all about. George called for the foul is fourth, and he heads out of the game. New sub coming in for West Virginia, Darius Nichols. And a 
quick foul. So John Beeline is going to try to extend this game, Lenny, as much as he can. Doesn't have a choice. And again, you don't have a lot of great shooters out there. Obviously, you got O'Bannon over 80 percent. You got Wade, the freshman, over 80 percent. Palacios at 68. Giannini, who's a walk-on. O'Bannon finally missing one. Louisville 8 of 15 from the free throw line in overtime. 93-85. Still about playing defense without fouling if you're Louisville. Beeline way off the mark. Giannini with the rebound. The Louisville Cardinals can smell St. Louis. <laughs> you talk about being lucky, boy. Brandon Jenkins missed that dunk but got it back. Louisville somehow, some way, manages to come back after being down by 20 and defeat West Virginia 93-85, and they're heading for the Final Four.